Hi guys, Goffy here and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to talk about this. This is the Leica 28mm Elmerit f2.8 and I honestly think this is the sharpest lens I've ever used. From a sharpness point of view, this lens is absolutely bonkers and I've owned it for about six months now and it's become my most used Leica lens even though it sits in a collection alongside two other Leica Summerlux. And in today's video, six months in, I just want to do a bit of a hands-on review. So then what do we actually have here? We've got a 28mm lens with a somewhat slow fastest aperture of f2.8 which is achieved using 10 aperture blades and inside the lens we've got eight elements in six groups. Weight wise this lens is tiny, it's 175 grams without the hood and it's 211 grams with the hood. The lens hood itself is square in design and screws into the front of the lens and it has a helpful little cutout to stop some of the viewfinder blockage. And importantly this lens also comes with a couple of extra bits hidden in the lens pouch so you should also get a small blanking ring that hides the thread where the hood attaches when not in use and a small push on lens cap which combined with the lens blanking ring is perfect for ditching the hood altogether and making the most of Leica's smallest lens. And in all of the marketing material on their website it goes on and on about how this lens has practically zero distortion no matter where you're focused throughout that focusing range. First of all I think what we're going to do is we're going to kick off with sharpness because honestly this is the sharpest lens I've ever used. I know we said we'd get away from the technical stuff but if you are interested in MFT charts here is the one for this lens and what this is basically saying is even wide open this is a lens that is sharp pretty much across the entire image and it also has a lot of contrast to boot and that is exactly what my experience says with this lens. At f2.8 things are ridiculously sharp it's definitely the sharpest lens I've ever used and it makes this Leica M10 feel like it has more megapixels than it actually does. Now some of that sharpness is probably due to the fact that this lens is an f2.8 lens and if I stop down some of my summer luxes then maybe I'd be kind of shocked by their sharpness as well. Hopefully here on YouTube you can see just how sharp these images are. Now I personally in my own kind of editing style generally dial in a little bit of minus clarity and this is a lens that definitely benefits from that in certain situations. If you're taking portraits sometimes that epic sharpness can be just a little bit too much. Dialing in a little bit less clarity can be the bit that kind of adds that bit of softness back to your image. But I definitely have the preference of having a sharp lens and I'll dial in some softness than the opposite where you've got a soft lens and it's almost impossible to put the sharpness back in. Next up then, the big win for me has got to be the tiny size of this lens. Now when I first got it, for the first couple months, I found myself using the lens hood all of the time. I have this thing for square lens hoods. I just think they look really cool and I found myself using it all the time. Now the lens hood doesn't really add any weight to this lens, it weighs something like 20 grams that you're never really going to notice, but it has an awful lot of volume to the front of your camera and it's that extra volume that's kind of got me ditching that lens hood completely for the last few months because if you take the lens hood off and put the lens cap on the front this ends up being so small that it's really really easy to pack into a Billingham Hadley next to my bigger cameras like my X-H2S. And the other thing as well with removing the lens hood is then you might think you might get more flaring issues but I just went through all of the images I've taken with this lens and I have struggled to find a single example of where this lens has flared. The flare control of this lens is honestly incredible. Next up then let's quickly talk build quality because I think build quality is probably the one thing that maybe has a little bit of a downside to it and it all comes in this aperture ring. The aperture ring of this lens feels maybe a little bit sloppy. The clicks aren't all that kind of strong and I find myself sometimes when I'm focusing accidentally knocking the aperture ring and changing the setting by accident. And I reached out to other people on Instagram that have the lens and they've all kind of reported the same thing. The aperture ring definitely doesn't feel as good as it does on other lenses. But away from the aperture ring, the lens is honestly exactly what you'd expect. It's small, it's lightweight, and the finger tab on the bottom has that kind of resistance that you'd expect. It's just a shame about the aperture ring and I think ultimately the aperture ring doesn't change my views on this lens much but it's probably the only thing I can think of that I don't like about it. And then next up let's talk about the f2.8 because I think for many people that f2.8 is the bit that turns them off this lens and they end up deciding not to buy it. Now for me when I'm predominantly using digital bodies I actually really like the fact that it's f2.8. Now I find for 28mm photography if I'm shooting 28mm then I probably want the environment in my image and I don't want to blow it so far out of focus that you can't tell where I am. If I wanted to do that I'd probably be using a longer lens in the first place. So I actually quite like the fact this lens is small and f2.8 because I really don't need the extra speed in a 28mm lens. 
Now for me, what I do is I combine this lens with my 50mm Summerlux for what I think makes the best two lens combination. A slow 28 and a fast 50. And I'll lean into that fast 50 if I want a good portrait or if I maybe do want to just blow the background a little bit out of focus. But I actually find as well that f2.8 is still enough to separate your subject from the background. So even in some of the portraits that I've taken, I actually really like how they look. And also that complete lack of distortion again helps with portraits no matter where you are on that focusing range. But I can see if you were somebody that shoots film, sometimes there is no kind of replacement for a bit of speed. If you're shooting film stocks and you can't lean into an ISO, then I could see why maybe f2.8 wouldn't suit you. But for digital shooters, especially on the modern cameras, I think f2.8 is probably more than fast enough for most of your 28mm needs. Prior to having this 28mm Elmrit, my previous lens was the Voigtlander 28mm f2 Ultron lens. Now, is this lens here worth a thousand pound more than that Voigtlander lens? The short answer to that is no. My Voigtlander lens was honestly awesome. It was probably my most used lens ever. Like it's probably the lens I use more than any other lens I've ever owned. And I absolutely loved it. This lens is sharper, it is smaller, it is a little bit slower as well. This lens does feel like it's built a little bit better, but is all of that worth a thousand pound? Probably not. The Leica is never really gonna be the value proposition. But at the same time, I do not regret making that upgrade. Me personally, I'm getting an awful lot of fun and value out of that extra sharpness. And the fact that this lens isn't gonna depreciate is also a bit of a win. The Ultron, I think I bought it for 600 pounds and I've just sold it for like 300. So there was a lot of depreciation there that I probably won't experience having bought this lens used. So there we have it then. This 28 Elmer is my most used Leica lens at the minute, even though it sits alongside two of Leica's best summer luxes. And that all comes down to the fact that it's small size and sharpness mean that it makes a very versatile lens. Now, a lot of people write this off because of that f2.8, but for me, if I'm shooting 28 mil, I want the environment in there and I don't really need a fast 28, not when I've lined it up with a really fast 50 mil. So for me, by far my most used lens at the minute, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Ultimately, is it worth the extra money over the Voigtlander lenses? Probably not, but I'm also not regretting that decision. It's the sharpest lens I have ever used and I'm really enjoying using it. If you've enjoyed this video as much as I've liked this lens, then please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It means an awful lot and there's an awful lot more Leica content coming to the channel. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.